Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to talk about the simple gas laws. Today's essential question How are the gas laws used to predict the behavior of a gas? Before you proceed with today's lecture, make sure you have available both your calculators and your reference tables. Gas variables. There are four different variables that will affect the behavior of a gas. And then a couple quick definitions. First, variables are things that can change. And then we have constants. And constants are things that do not change. Um, for the rest of this lecture, we'll be talking, focusing on variables, things that can change. Okay, so the four different variables that will affect the behavior of a gas are, first, there's pressure, which we represent as a capital P, and we're talking about pressure exerted by the particles. The units, and you do need to be familiar with this, the pressure units can be ATM or atmospheres, MMHG, which is millimeters mercury, pascals, kilopascals, PSI, which is pounds per square inch, and tor. Then we have temperature. Um, and here we're talking about temperature in Kelvin. That is really important. When dealing with the gas laws, we have to use the scale of Kelvins, not degrees Celsius, not degrees Fahrenheit, Kelvin. So there you go, units, Kelvin. And in science, usually when we actually measure something, measure a temperature, we use degrees Celsius. So how do you convert from Celsius to Kelvin? Really easy. Add 273. And actually, to be more specific, we'll use 273. 0.15. Okay, so for example, if I had something that was 20 degrees Celsius, if I wanted to know what that was in Kelvin, I just add 273.15 to that, giving me 293.15. Now, little sig fig review. Remember when we're adding, we look at decimal places and 20 only has no decimal places. So it would be 273K. Okay, the next variable is volume. And volume is the volume we're talking about occupied by the particles. And remember, volume is the amount of space something takes up. And the units for volume are anything with liters. So for example, milliliters, liters, centiliters, any kind of liters, and anything meters cubed, centimeters cubed, millimeters cubed, etc. And the last variable, our all-time favorite, moles, which irritatingly are represented by an N, a small N, standing for number of moles. Okay, so those are the four variables that can affect the behavior of a gas. All right, on to the gas laws. Because the gas variables are interrelated, when, when, when we're talking about the gas variables, again, we're talking about pressure and volume and temperature and number of moles. And because those things are interrelated, when one changes, it affects the other variables. And the simple gas laws allow us to predict the behavior of, of a gas under certain conditions. All right, and then we have a formula here showing the relationship of the different variables. So we have pressure one times volume one over number of moles one times temperature one. And I'll get rid of that now. And the ones stand for initial. Okay, so where we started with, what, what the starting place, okay, or initial, okay? And that equals pressure two times volume two divided by number of moles two times temperature two. And so this is the ending 
variables. So what, what, where they ended. We're now going to discuss four simple gas laws um, that all use this exact relationship. So try to remember P1 V1 over, over N1 times T1 equals P2 V2 over N2 T2. If you can remember that, the rest of the gas laws, at least the rest of the simple gas laws, are simple. The first of the simple gas laws we're going to discuss is Boyle's law. Okay, so Boyle determined that when the number of moles and temperature are held constant, there's an inverse relationship between the pressure and volume of a gas. Okay, so what's important? Well, this whole sentence is important, but keep in mind that for Boyle's law, both moles and temperature are held constant. They do not change. And when that is the case, Boyle determined that there's an inverse relationship between the pressure and volume of a gas. So what in the world does that mean? That means that the pressure and volume change in opposite directions, meaning one increases, the other decreases. So um, inverse relationship means that the variables that we're talking about change in the opposite direction. And you can see this mathematically. So let's write the, um, our variables again in the relationships. We have P1, V1 over N1, T1 equals P2, V2 over N2, T2. And remember that, um, that Boyle says that moles and temperature are constant, which means we can ignore these two guys here. So let's just make this neater by getting rid of it. And we're just dealing with P1 and V1. So let's pick a pressure and a volume. So we'll say our pressure one is two ATM. It's a pressure unit. And our volume one is um, one liter. Okay. And then our... Um, Pressure two, let's, let's increase our pressure to four ATM. And we want to know what is the new volume. Well, you can predict it. It says here, Boyle says that they change in opposite directions, which means if pressure increases, volume should decrease. And let's see if that works mathematically. So two times one is two ATM liter. And on the other side, we have 4 ATM X. Now, solving for X, we're going to divide both sides by 4 ATM, leaving us with the unit liter. And when we divide 2 divided by 4, we end up with 0 0.5 liters. So Boyle was right. We increased our pressure. We went from 2 to 4 ATM. And what happened to the volume? It decreased. All right, and now we have a quick little graphical representation of Boyle's law. When we plot pressure versus volume, what you should be able to see is that as the pressure increases, if we go from, I don't know, let's say that's 10 ATM, we've got a volume of about, I don't know, what do you think that is? 50 milliliters? And then if we go all the way up to like 90 ATM, our volume decreases to maybe 10 milliliters. Okay, so and this would be a graph that look like this is showing an inverse or indirect relationship. And then the last little thing about Boyle's law here, once again, here is our equation showing the relationships of all the variables. Um, but you can see that I, I crossed out the number of moles and the temperature because for Boyle's law, they're held constant. So when you're calculating Boyle's law, when you're calculating using Boyle's law or dealing with only pressure and volume, you can ignore the number of moles and the temperature. All right, let's talk about Boyle's law, but look at a molecular explanation. Why 
does it happen that when you in increase the pressure, the volume decreases and vice versa? So if the same amount of gas particles are put into a smaller space, the particles are going to be packed closer together, right? Which means, and remember, gas particles are moving around. And so if they're squished into a smaller space, they're going to be hitting each other more often and hitting the sides of the container more often, leading to an increased pressure. So as the volume decreases, the pressure increases. You could also say if the volume is increased, but the amount of gas particles remains the same, the gas particles are still moving at the same speed, but they're more spaced out. They're farther from each other and they're farther from the walls of the container. This is going to result in fewer collisions leading to a decrease in pressure. So as the volume increases, the pressure decreases. So that is sort of a molecular explanation to Boyle's law. Right, the next simple law is Charles' law. So Charles determined that when the number of, and of moles and pressure are held constant, there is a linear re or direct relationship between volume and temperature in Kelvin of a gas. So again, Charles, very different than Boyle's, is first of all holding pressure and number of moles constant, and now there is a linear or direct relationship between the volume and temperature of a gas in Kelvin. So what does that mean? Well, this means that the volume and temperature change in the same direction, or as one increases, the other increases. So linear or direct relationship is talking about the change in two variables changing in the same direction. All right, so let's prove that to ourselves. Um, so again, the relationship between all the variables P1, V1 over N1, T1 equals P2, V2 over N2, T2. This time, we're holding constant pressure and number of moles. So it's those two there that are held constant, and we're just v dealing with volume and temperature. So let's pick a volume of, let's say, 10 liters and a temperature of 5 Kelvin. And then our volume 2, let's change our, let's increase our volume 2 to 20 liters. So now, what's going to happen to the Kelvin temperature? So to solve two fractions with an equal sign in between, cross multiply. So we're going to end up with 5K times 20 liters which is 100 Kelvin liters, and then we'll multiply 10 liters by X. So to solve for X, our Kelvin, we'll divide both sides by 10 liters, giving us 100 divided by 10, which is 10K. So this time, what we did is we took our temperature, sorry, our volume from 10 liters to 20 liters, so we increased the volume. And what happened to temperature? We went from 5K to 10K, so we increased the temperature. So they both these variables change in the same direction. And here's a little graphical representation of that. If we graph volume by temperature, um, you will notice that as we increase the volume, so if we go from 10, 10 milliliters, we have a temperature in Celsius for some reason of, I don't know, what do you think that is, 20 degrees Celsius. And let's now increase the, temp the volume up to 100 milliliters, and we end up with a temperature that's in the 100 range. So they both increase at the same, the same way. And a graph that looks like this with an increasing slope is known as a linear or direct relationship. And here is the, one more time, here is the variables, PV over NT equals PV over NT. 
And Charles is interested in just the V and the T holding the P and N constant. So it'll look like that. Okay, in keeping with the pattern, let's talk about a little molecular explanation to Charles' law, why it works the way it does. Why is there a linear relationship where as the temperature increases, the volume increases and vice versa? Well, think about this. Heating a gas will make it expand. Why does it expand? Think about a balloon, right? You put a balloon in a hot car, what's going to happen? You can envision that. Um, well, gas molecules move faster when heat energy is added to them, causing them to strike with more force against the walls of their container, leading to an increased volume. Again, think about a balloon. A balloon has a, has a variable volume, right? You can stretch it out and shrink it down. So as the gas molecules are moving faster, they're hitting the sides of the container and each other more often with more force, and it's gonna stretch the balloon out, make it bigger, okay? And conversely, a, the volume of a gas decreases when a gas is cooled. Why? Well, the molecules move slower. They're hitting the walls with less force. So think about putting a balloon in a refrigerator. What would happen? Shrink up, try it, you'll see. The third of the simple gas laws we're gonna be discussing is Lussac's law. So let's see what Lussac had to say. Well, Lussac determined that when the number of moles and volume are held constant, there is a linear or direct relationship between the pressure and the temperature. And by now, you know what we mean by a linear or direct relationship, right? It means that if we increase the pressure, we will also increase the temperature or vice versa. So we can write that down. This means that the pressure and temperature change in the same direction as one increases, the other increases. Okay, I'm not gonna do the mathematical calculation for you this time, you can prove it to yourself. And you will note that we have a graph. Again, this is what a linear relationship would look like. You've already seen this. And again, if we have our variables, the relationship between our variables, this time we're gonna be crossing out volume and number of moles because they're held constant. So they, they don't change anything. Okay, so when you're dealing with Lussac's law or when you're dealing with only pressure and temperature, you can use um, just P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. We can ignore volume and number of moles. And on to a molecular explanation of Lussac's law. Again, heating a gas will make it expand for the same reason. Gas molecules move faster when heat energy is as added to them, causing them to strike with more force against the walls of their container, leading to an increased pressure. You will note that the molecular explanation is the same for Lussac and Charles. The difference is that with Charles' law, we're talking about something that has, can have a variable volume, like a balloon, like in a syringe, something where the volume can change. If the volume can increase, then the pressure's not going to. In, in Lussac's law, we're gonna be talking about um, a container that is rigid, like think about a gas tank, a cylinder, something that's rigid, where you're not gonna be changing the volume, and instead, when the gas molecules are hitting the size of the container harder, you're causing more pressure, more force. Okay, the pressure of a gas decreases when a gas is cooled because the molecules move smaller, slower. We've talked about this. All right, on to the last of the simple gas laws, Avogadro's law. Now think about it, you've heard the word Avogadro before. What do you think Avogadro's interested in? If you thought moles, you're right. Okay, so Avogadro determined that when the temperature, and I forgot an and here, when temperature, and pressure are held constant, there's a linear, linear relationship between the number of moles and the volume of a gas. What does a direct relationship mean again? It means that as one increases, the other increases. You know that, okay? So we're gonna have the same sort of graph, right? Same, same relationship. And who do we get to cross out this time? We get to cross out pressure and temperature. 
So when you're dealing, when pressure and temperature are held constant, you can ignore them and use V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. And again, I'm going to forego the mathematical calculation. It's going to look just like the calculation for Charles' Law. So let's talk about the molecular explanation for Avogadro's Law. And hopefully this one is, is sort of self-explanatory. When you add more gas particles to something, to a flexible container, the volume's going to increase. Think about blowing up a balloon. As you add more particles, right, increase the number of moles, you're going to be making a bigger balloon. And vice versa. If you let particle, gas particles escape a flexible container, the volume is going to reduce. All right, so hopefully that was fairly self-explanatory. And all we have left to do now is a few practice problems. Okay, so first practice problem. A woman has an initial lung volume of 2.75 liters, which is filled with air at an atmospheric pressure of 1.02 atm. If she increases her lung volume to 3.25 liters without inhaling any additional air, what is the change in pressure in her lungs? So looking at this problem, it looks like we're only dealing with volume and pressure, right? So we're just, we've got volume, liters, and pressure, that's our initial. And then she increases her volume and we're looking for pressure again. So we only have to deal with volume and pressure. So as a quick review, think about it. Which, which law deals with volume and pressure? Well, that would be Boyle's law, which is going to be, remember, it's P1, V1 over T1, N1, sorry, T1, equals P2, V2 over N2, T2. But we don't need to deal with the N and the T because they're being held constant. So we only have to deal with P1, V1 equals P2, V2. All right, so what I would do is list the variables, P1 and V1. And we have 2.75 liters for our P1. No, should have stopped me. Our, our V1 is 2.75 liters, and our P1 is 1.02 atm. And then we have P2 and V2. We're looking for pressure, so that's our X, and our V2 is 3.25 liters. Okay, let's make a quick prediction as practice. Um, what kind of relationship do the variables have, do P and V have in Boyle's Law? Indirect, right? When one increases, the other decreases. So let's look and see what happens here. We change V1 from 275 to 325, which means the volume is increasing, which means what should be happening to the pressure? It should be decreasing. So let's do the calculations and see if we're right. All right, so I'm going to plug my variables into this formula. So we're going to have P1 times volume 1 equals pressure 2 times volume 2. All right, why don't we go ahead and multiply the left-hand side, our initials, and see what that gives us. And I got 2.805 atm liters equals x times 3.25 liters. And to solve for our x, which is our pressure 2, we're going to divide both sides by 3.25 liters. And our liters cross out, leaving us with ATM. And when we solve for that, we get, um, let's see, I got 0 
ATM. Um, now if check sig figs, so let's see here, we have three sig figs. Remember we're multiplying, so we're actually looking at the number of significant digits. We have three and we have three, so our answer is gonna have three, which are those three there. So final answer is 0 0.863 ATM. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too difficult. Um, now, before we move on, I want to point out, I know you guys aren't all big fans of this, but you notice I write all my units, I cancel things out. These problems can get really complicated and it's really easy to get lost. Please write your units. All right, let's try one more problem. In fact, why don't you try the problem without me? All right, let's start by reading through the problem and seeing what variables we have here. So we have an athlete in a kinesthology research study has a lung volume of 6.15 liters during deep inhalation. At this volume, his lungs contain 2.245 moles of air. During exhalation, so something's changing here, his lung volume decreases to 2.55 liters. How many moles of gas did the athlete exhale? Okay, so let's write down um, the relationship of our variables. We have P1, V1 over N1, T1 equals P2, V2 over N2, T2. All right, and it looks like we're just dealing this time with liters and moles. And since I didn't, they didn't say anything else, we're gonna assume that temperature and pressure remain constant. So that means we're dealing with volume and number of moles. So let's do a quick practice. Whose law deals with volume and number of moles? Avogadro's. All right, let's list our variables. We've got our initial volume of 6.15 liters and our initial moles is 0 0.254 mole and our final volume is 2.55 liters and our final number of moles is what we're trying to figure out. All right, let's make a quick prediction. So um, it looks like our volume is the thing changing and we go from 6.15 liters to 2.55 liters. So that means the volume is increasing. So what should happen to the number of moles? What's the relationship here? Is it direct or is it inverse? It's a direct relationship, which means if the volume increases, the number of moles should increase as well. So now let's do our calculations and see if we're right. All right, let's set up our problem. So we're gonna have our initial volume divided by our initial number of moles equals our final volume or new volume divided by our unknown. All right, now to solve for this, we need to cross multiply, giving us 6.15 liters X equals 0 0.254 mole times 2.5 2.55 liters, sorry for the mess. All right, let's, um, so well, when we do our multiplications, we'll end up with 6.15 liters X equals 0 0.6477 mole liters. 
And to get the X by itself, we'll divide both sides by 6.15 liters. Our liters crossed out, we're left with mole, which is what we wanted. And so when we do our division, we get, um, let's see, I got 0 0.105. 317073 mole. And the last step is to check sig figs. And I sort of made this too easy. We have 3 and 3 and 3, which means our answer is going to have 3. So our final answer will be 0 0.105 mole. All right, so there you go. That's it for today. Have a good one.